Awesome, that was just a joke, you guys. So today we're gonna go through, oh, where's my expo marker? There it is. Wait, there. I was about to be fired up I was about to be like, dang, who stole my micro? We're gonna go through some basic plyometrics. Now, what does plyometrics look like? Everyone give me a quick answer. Any explosive. Okay, um, explosive. Fast. Cool, Nick, something quick. Kai? Um, I would say like, more like, no, like, weight, like, probably no weights. What? Uh, power and rate of force production focused. Very, very good answers. I would still use the, the weights can be involved with plyometrics. A good definition if anyone were to ever ask you what is plyometrics, it's speed slash power. Development that can be transitioned into sport. So a really easy definition. Basically all we're looking for here, just like you said, Nick, like you said, Ryan, it's power, it's speed, it's something fast. Just like what you said, Jake, rate of force development. It's something that we can transition into their sport while they're moving fast, quick, and powerful. Does that one make sense? Now today we're just gonna cover some basics of plyometric. We're gonna go through some definitions in here, then we're gonna try some of them out. When we go through some basics of plyometrics, there's usually about four terms we'll look at. For today, we're gonna to look at jump, we're gonna look at hop, we're gonna look at bound, and then the fourth term we'll look at is gonna be drop. So can anyone tell me first before we go into all of these four, what is the repetition of a plyometric call? What would you usually hear it referred to as? If I were to do 10 jumps in a row, what would those 10 jumps be called if I were programming something? Not, not quite. No, they think of that more of like an exercise. So if I count it, we're going to call them contacts. So whenever you hear anything developed into uh, plyometrics, the total amount of contacts or total body contacts is at plyo. So if I did... 30 jumps in a session, I would have 30 contacts of plyo for that session. Does that make sense? So that contact word is just something you're gonna see anytime you're programming or working with plyometrics, the word contact is returned to the, the reps or how many contacts you have throughout that movement. Does that all make sense? Is that cool. what you put the like, C-O-N-T on the board? Uh, that could be continuous, that's but that's no, that's not, that means continuous okay. to when I put C-O-N-T. Okay. Uh, contacts is more in terms of the number of reps or jumps performed, okay. but we'll go into all that here in just a second. Uh, jump. What does a jump look like? Let's think in terms of the context of their landing. Low to high. Low, low to high. Okay, that's a good call. Uh, good statement. We can write that down. Ish. Typically low to high. Anyone? Got, let's think about their feet. A jump means a two foot jump to two foot landing. So if I program a hurdle jump, I'd be jumping off two feet, landing on two feet. Two feet. Exactly. A box jump would be a two feet. to two feet landing. Exactly. Cool. Now let's go into hop. I've told this to a few of us. Let's see if anyone remembers. Hop would be a single leg jump to a single leg, single leg landing, but which leg? Same, Same leg. leg. Same leg. Yep. Let's start that right here during the word hop. So hurdle hops, for example... I wouldn't even have to write single leg hurdle hops because you know that a hop means single leg and it means they're going over the one foot landing on the same foot. Same foot. Move. Now let's go bound. Don't think of this like an acceleration bound. Think of it like bounds in terms of jumps. Let's say this, this is a single leg jump to a one, one leg, one yep. leg, single leg landing. Single to leg. single leg landing. Now All take a guess right. after we just went through it. Is it same or opposite? All opposite. Opposite leg. Yep. Let's start that as well. Now drops, uh, in terms of, I think you guys put the jump in terms of drop. You can do jump drops, single leg, double leg, um, similar to that, but this would be exactly what you talked about. What would we, what did we talk about at the beginning? What would jump look like? It was low to high. high so to what's drop look like? High to low. High to low. We'll go through drop. Biggest thing when we're working on drops is for, can anyone take a guess what I'm gonna say next? It's force. Ground contact. Absorption. Absorption. Now that ground contact. Absorb. 
I don't even know how to spell absorption. A B S O R P T I O. I got it right. There we hey. go. Uh, you were gonna say the word ground contact. You were thinking for ground contact like, time. Like yeah. For quickness. Uh, not yeah. necessarily a depth drop yeah, would be depth. sticking in that landing, but you could have something known as a drop jump, which is that quick ground contact that's, time that's exploding back up into a jump. Going through from there. Does that make sense? Uh, but this is really all you need to know when it comes to a drop standpoint. We're programming it for force absorption. It goes from high to low. You can do it weighted, unweighted, single leg, um, higher elevation, lower elevation, kind of going throughout. Typically in a plyo series, uh, this is where you start. Say you have an athlete who's never done plyos before. Uh, typically you start here. Does that make sense? But that's more for an athlete who's never done anything before where you kind of take them there. Cool, awesome. Now let's go through some things. Uh, jumping wise, two foot to two foot. Uh, now let's think of the words. Um, let's add in non-continuous and continuous. Now what does non-continuous look like? It's a single oh, jump. One big hop, up, or one big jump up. <laughs> Cool. Uh, one jump overloaded, uh, pause between was a good one, or a full reset. So, full, or say full reset between. Now, continuous, what would that be? Uh, not a full constant. reset. Yeah, con reset. constant, no reset. I like to say reps done in succession. Now, you can copy that for all of these. I just won't write it for each one, okay? So imagine we wrote this in for each hop down, but not for your drops. So that's its own little category going right there. Now, there's some specific terms we can go in. What was something we wanted to count as, if I'm counting the total amount of jumps I did that day, what am I counting? My total number, I said you guys the words we should remember. What was the net word? I have a question. Yeah, I might have an answer. Uh, wait, so we're just doing the non-continuous and continuous for Jump, hop, and bounce, right? Yeah, you wouldn't really see a... That's what I was thinking about. I would, I'd be impressed to see someone do a continuous drop. Yeah. That's, that's or really high, good yeah, down, big stairs. Possible. Interesting. It's possible. I'm not, yeah, <laughs> not sure. Maybe possible. Let's not go through that. But yes, it would just be for these three. I think drops its own category alone. But now, what was something we talked about? If I'm going to count my total amount of times I jump or my total plyo set session, what am I counting? My contacts. contacts, exactly. So now we're going to go and think a term called a uh, double contact jump. Jump, hop, or bat. So this would be a way to get more contacts into a total plyo session. Basically, all this would look like if I wanted to do a double contact jump, I would punch my feet in the ground, and then I would jump, being the two contacts coming through that position. Rather than be my one contact from jumping up and landing, I get the second contact by punching my feet into the ground and exploding upward. Does that all make sense? So is that like when we do the, um, the little pogo jumps into the into the mat with the NFL guys? Like when you, when you tell them like the secret is to like jump high on the last one, like they punch into the mat. Cause that's what Brax says a lot, he punches into the mat. And then he Think of that's more like an equal or like an equal and opposite reaction. The harder you punch the ground, mm -hmm. um, the harder you put more force into one area. So think about your vector. If I'm putting force straight down, where does that same force have to take me? Oh. Straight up, exactly. But that was just a way, so we have three hurdle jumps, so I can create more contacts. Because okay. I didn't have those hurdles, and they just did two reps of jumps, how many total contacts would they have for that plyo session? Three. Eight. If they had two, four, four sets. Yeah, oh. Kai was here, you weren't here this morning. <laughs> so two jumps. But now they have three hurdles, plus the jump at the end, okay. and it's now eight total jumps per set times four. That plyo session just went from what could have been eight reps, now into... 32. Exactly. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's just a way for me to get more contacts into their session. But double contact is just another interesting way. It allows you to create a little bit more <coughs> speed and power and rate of force development because I'm punching the ground quickly, trying to then create that explosive force. So similar, I'm telling my athletes to create as much force below them as they can by punching the ground and then hopefully allowing that same amount of force to take them upward into that explosive force. Does that make sense? Yeah. Anyone have any questions about double contact? Same thing, double contact could be seen everywhere throughout. Um, you'll see it a lot in your hops and your jumps. Now going through just some basic plyometrics, does that, anyone have any questions why we call one thing a jump, why we call it a hop, why we call it a bound, or why we call it a drop?
no question everyone understands kind of the the basics all going through cool smooth uh before i kind of continue and go through does anyone have any questions over any of this no everyone feels good with non-continuous continuous no pretty smooth cool uh basically the last thing when it comes to plyo a lot of the plyos um you can see very specific whether it be vertex reaches, different things like that. You wanna make your plyos first, you wanna start make sure they have the capability to go through a plyo session when you're programming or coaching. That's why we start on some drops because they're a little bit less strenuous and a little bit less form demanding going through a movement. Uh, but then you wanna make sure we're progressing them and we're making sure it can do what? Keep transitioning into, into their sport. sport. Similar to any the reason why we do a drill, make sure it has some type of transitioning into their sport. Meaning a lot of times you can see a plyo, even being an upper body plyo, being some drops, push up explosive reps, different things like that, making sure we can transition that into what they're gonna actually experience throughout their sport. Uh, today's homework, or this week's homework, what we're gonna go through, um, you guys are gonna go through and pick one of every movement. You guys are gonna film going through. Uh, you'll film just one rep of each movement of a jump, hop, bound, and drop. Um, I want the jump, I'll let you guys write this down. Uh, the jump, just being a single rep, uh, I want it to be a double contact jump. Your guys hop, I want it to be a continuous version of a hop. You guys is bound, I want it to be a non-continuous movement. And then your guys' drop, I would like you to get fancy with it and experiment a little bit with your drops and try to create one, or not even create one of your own, but pick something rather than just dropping and absorbing. So you guys can get a little bit fancier with your drop, okay? So this is just some basic plyometrics metrics we're gonna kind of cover today. Uh, we're gonna go out there on the turf right now. I'm just gonna let you guys kind of try out and feel the differences between these four and just knowing what these four look like and why we call one a hop, one a bound, one a jump. Uh, but going through today, that'll just be the basics for our homework. Cool? Awesome, smooth, let's head on out there.